So the last uh, few weeks, we've been um, really getting into Rav Pincus, and um, he's really been trying to convince us to spend more time outside of davening um, to be prepared for davening. In other words, to to you know put in the time and effort to prepare ourselves outside of the time that we're actually in shul davening. And so I think at this point it's time to to change. Um, you know, tracks for a moment, um, <clears throat> probably for another couple of weeks as we go through this, and look at a sefer called Masechet um, Shotfila. Um, Uri and I actually looked at this a few weeks ago before we sort of, you know, took a step back and started to look at Rav Pincus. Um, but this sefer is really all about helping us um, understand um, at a much deeper level what what's going on in Tfila. So this is um, the introduction. I just made a photocopies of, of parts of the introduction to it. Um, and what he's going to, we'll just jump right into it. But where he started, because this is sort of in the middle of a paragraph, is he starts by talking about um, the three different areas that we should be thinking about when we're trying to understand davening at a deeper level. And the first um, area is in the sort of the, the obvious one that we all sort of gravitate towards, which is just understanding the words that we're saying. So he's talking about and taking the example of, um, you know, in Korbanos, at the beginning of Shacharis, when we're starting to um, go through Korbanos, we say the, um, the paragraph about the Korban Tamid. And so he talks about, you know, what does it mean to understand the words? And he says, it's not just the, the meaning of the words, like Tzav, Tzav is B'nai Yisrael, Lashen Zeruz, right? So it's not just understanding what it means command, but it's Lashen zero. So understanding the word, you know, more, more of the context of the word as well. Um, what does it mean, Barmachalehem? Korbani, what does it mean? My sacrifice, Zahadam, Lachmi, Elo, Emorim, Haniktarim. So it's, so Lachmi, you know, you might say, oh, my bread, right? What does that mean? No, it's the Emorim, Haniktarim. Those are the parts that are, that are burned in the Mizbeach. So, He's giving us an idea of, of not just understanding the words, but understanding, you know, what's really the meaning behind the words. Right? What, what's what what uh, lesson or what information is the are, are the words trying to convey to us? So that's the first piece, but it's certainly not the end of the story. And this is where I want to sort of pick it up is right where he says Achilaka Sheni. So the second thing we need to think about, he says, Koteres um, Aketa What is a paragraph? Um, you know, what's the essence of the paragraph itself? That in this case, the essence of the paragraph is, and we're talking about the carbon tamid, that there is a, um, there was a tzivoy when we had the, the, the besamikdash to bring the carbon tamid both in the morning and a second one um, in the afternoon. So that's the second piece of it, is just understanding like what, what is the, the totality of that piece? What's it all about? And the next piece to understand is, what is this paragraph or this piece of davening doing right here? Why is it specifically in this location and not two paragraphs later or two paragraphs before or, you know, in some other place? And he says, this is really what the Sefer is all about, um, is, what, is what they wrote the Sefer to understand, to help us understand. He says, So we're still going within this example of the Korban Tamid. And he says, um, so the Tamid of Rabbi Yonah in, in Brachos says, um, So why are we doing this here? So the Rabbeinu Yonah, or the Tamir of Rabbeinu Yonah say, because this is connecting us back to Birka Satora. Bekin Kosov Baal HaMaor Hevir Rabbeinu Manoach, Perk Zayim Mehochos Tfila, Vizel Lashonu De Shalosh Brachos Elu, Perish Birka Satora, that the three brachos of Birka Satora, Yizkamu Ba'ad Mikra Umishna V'Talmud. That the Takana of saying Birka Satora was all about, or it was, you know, sort of, in, in as a prerequisite for learning Mikra, meaning um, any of uh, any Psukim and Tanakh, Mishnah and Talmud, and you know, Mishnah the Gemara. Shem Shlosha in Yanim Shal Torah, Omishum Hachi, Lomi Boyle, Le Inchi, Lav Sukim, Bosser de Varecho, 
Honey, give a brachos, ad de kare mikra umishna ve And because of that, because that's the, um, according to the Talmudim of the Rabbeinu Yonan and others, because there was a takana of saying birchas Torah before we learning any of these other three things, then we should connect them right away. So right after we say birchas Torah, we should be starting to learn mikra, mishna, and Talmud. So that's where Parshas Tzav comes in, of the carbon Tamid. Keneget um, Mikra, or Parshas Birchas Kohanim. Also, we could say, you know, Birchas Kohanim, which is what we say right after, right? The, the um, you know, sort of the part of the, uh, of just the, the way that it's been formulated to say Birchas Torah, we, we right away go into Birchas Kohanim. Um, and why, so why do we have, the entire parak of a Zehuma coming from, from Zvachim towards the end. You know, we do that right before Pesukah to Zimra. So that's Kenegad Mishnah. A Mishnah is Elu Dvarim She'en Lahem Shi'ur, or we can do Elu Dvarim, right? That, again, that has already been formulated as part of, we see it right after uh, Berkha Zatora, but the Ezehuma Komen is also in there for that same purpose of having, um, of having us learn Mishnayis, um, connecting us back to Berkha Zatora. So why do we say Rabbi Shmuel Omer, right? The 13 uh, ways of understanding, of, of learning, of darshaning out um, Torah. We do that right before we say Mizmar Shur Chanukah Sabayish David. Oh, Brisa Acher, so we could have a different Brisa as well. Can I get Talmud? And that is why it's the third piece. It's the, it's the Talmud piece of it. Adkan Lashono, and this is the end of uh, the Rabbi Riona. Ukfiya nira shabit nusa harishunam hayu parshiosa karbanus misudarim tekaf acher birchas Torah. That's why we lead in right after we have the brachos, we go right into karbanos. Kach nira medivri balham or verbin o yona shehis kardum. Vehe nira gam ked ma buddha arham. Umari bar yakar vaham umitur mish and from the ishibuli haleket. Shalo sidru davar acher bin tayim. There's nothing else in between these two. We go right into Korbanos once we're done. Uh, I mean, we do have, you know, after Birchat Satora, you know, sometimes we're saying the Birchat Shachar, but after the Brachos, we're going right into uh, the Korbanos. Umistavrashe ta'am amhu kfi shakatsu rebeno yona, ba'am ma'or anal, k'de lahasmich limu Torah le Birchat Satora. There should be, you know, right, right, you're going right from Birchat Satora into, into actually learning Torah. Elisha, um, should I die? Jeff, sorry, I lost a little bit then. What is for Mishnah? What what is the part of which for Mishnah? So for Mishnah, it's either, it's either Elu Devarim, you know. So if you think about the formulation of the Berchas Torah, right after Berchas Torah, we say Yivavrecha Chasham Vishmarecha, right? We say that's Berchas Kohanim. Then we say Elu Devarim She'en Lam Shur, right? That's a Mishnah. Or um, according to the Rabbeinu Yona, I guess it's more of a complete learning when we do a Zehu Makoman. So it's that you know th- there's. Right, that's that entire paragraph of Mishnayis that we say right before uh, we get into Pesuk and Zimra. So, if you've ever wondered why is that right, you know, right situated right at the beginning of davening, so the Rabbeinu Yona and many others are saying the reason for that is um, so that our Birchaz Torah has something to be call on. Right? We, here's the problem, I think, is that you can't just make Birchaz Torah and go four hours and then, you know, at lunchtime, right, we're learning together. Right? That would be a problem. Um, so what we want to do is have a chavos right to that Birchaz Kohanim, I'm sorry, to, to the uh, Birchaz Torah. And the way we, that we do that is it's formulated into the following itself. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, we're, 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 okay. So he says, Ela Shadayin Yish Lishol, Mara Ulimkur Dafka Bepsukim Elu, Yosem Shar Psuki Torah. So, why specifically the, sorry, there's other, there's other Mikra, there's other Tayas, there's other Talmud. Here it's Bizeo, Budaham, Budaham comes and answers. Demasha Kavu Achar Bech, the Torah Limud Be Inim and Kabonos. Who can she? You Yerasam Gam in Hakapara. So he says that there's really the Abu Darham tells us there's actually you know, sort of two different mylas of this. One is that again we're connecting it back to Berkas Torah, so we're getting that um, we're getting that advantage of of do, go, going right into learning, but. Um, but there's also the myla of connecting this over to 
um, davening, which is what we're doing, right? That's really the Indian that we're involved in is we're davening. So if we'd say korbanos, there's an idea from Chazal that even though we can't bring korbanos today, if we go through the korbanos um, by reciting them, reciting them either from Torah or from the Mishnayas, understanding like more of the halachos around them, then it's as if, right? It's, it's, it's as if we have brought the korbanos and we get the schar for that. So that's what the Abu Darham is saying is that it just, it gives us an added connection back to davening that we're going to get the schar for saying, um, you know, the, the kapar for saying the, the korbanos. Here's what he says. Here's what he says. Anybody who says it with, you know, really understanding what they're saying, it's as if you have been makriv a korban. Uh, so he also says, but there's another reason that we say korbanos. Maybe it's the third reason is that we know that Shachris, Mincha, and Marev were all misakin um, keneged the the korbanos, right? That um, we say Shachris in the morning, it's because there was a korban tamid in the morning, right? We say Mincha in the afternoon, and why? What's the hours of saying the Mincha? It's it's set aside uh, or set up just like when we would bring the korban tamid in the afternoon, the ben arbaim, and then mariv uh, is connected. I think the emorim that you could burn right throughout the throughout the night. Um, so because of that, there's a, again another connection to the korbanos, which is why of all the mishnayos that we're going to choose, we're going to choose the izehu mekoman. At least one of the reasons, because it again deals with korbanos. Okay, so harisha. So we've just sort of examined this, and now we have a much deeper understanding of, you know, why we're going right from Birchas HaShachar into Korbanos and Ezeh HaMakal, and we have a much better understanding, much deeper understanding, not just by looking at what the words mean, but by understanding why are we doing this, Like, right? What's the connection back to Davening? So that's, again, that's his third idea of understanding why is it here specifically. Um, so, and it, one of the reasons I, I love this introduction is he gives us so many concrete examples that, you know, we can really just, um, you know, leverage and, and use um, for, you know, uh, for our davening, for preparation for our davening. And he says, Dugma Nusafes, here's another example. She, Indian actually This is another example of how the idea of the connection of davening, um, it really sort of just sort of sticks out. It says, Metsinu be'amirs shoshoyom. Right, the last thing, at least as Ashkenazi, the last thing that we say um, in the morning is the Shir Shoyom. So in, in uh, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah tells us that that was, that that was Masaki, and that we have a special Kapitol um, Tehillim uh, that is set aside for each day of the week. And when we learn that Gemara out and really think about it, and here's a really interesting facet that he brings out, which is that, and we'll see this in the Gemara in just a moment, that it's not that the entire um, capital of, of Tehillim is, is, is appropriate or is connected to that day, uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, etc. It's just a single line. Um, in that in that mizmor is is what's is what's making the connection. Um, and he says, Upami mafilu oteva achas mitochami. And sometimes, as, as we'll see, it's just a, it's just one or two words in that capital is the reason why we say it. Uh, why do we say on Sunday? Um, that's the capital. That's the first pasuk in the capital. The Gemara says, why? Because that first line says that Hashem has the, the land and everything that fills it up. Um, Tevo, the inhabited land, and those who inhabit it. Why? Because it says that he acquired and he can give over and he is the one who rules over the world. Perashrashi says in the Gemara over there, La Hashem Haaretz, Hashem as the land, Kol HaMizmar, Shekana, what does it mean, Shekana? Shemaim Va'aretz, he acquired Shemaim Va'aretz, I guess through the creation process, Vihikne, he can give it over, Teva Le what does it mean, Teva Le means 
he's giving over the land to those people, to to Adam, to um, uh, to to the people who you know who who he creates, Adkan. Harishirak a pasuk harish on the Hashem Harutz Umloa kasher lebrias tevo umlo shahaisa ba biyam rishon. Right, yom rishon is about the creation of the world, and it's really only that first pasuk that is nogeya to the creation. Kamashikasa brishes bara alokeva so shemayim v'saretz v'ilu yeser ha mizmar medaber b'edin acher. But the rest of the mizmar is talking about something completely different. Lachem nesayim Rashi kol ha mizmar. Why does Rashi say? Um, at the beginning, where it says "La Hashem Haaretz Kol Hamizmar," Rotzelomar Shafa Pisha In Kol Hamizmar Medaber Bosa Inyan Ella Beish Haroy Laamod Bahar Hashem Kavosh Kosav Mi Yale Bahar Hashem. Really, if you look at it, this is Rashi's question. The rest of the capital has nothing to do with Brachis at all. The creation of the world. It's talking about. Um, the person who is Roy to be standing in in, in the in the mountain of, of Hashem, Yaleh Bahar Hashem. And it also talks about what it requires for you to be prepared for for uh, you know the divine revelation. Bemitash um, in the Mesa Mitash Kamashikasov Seusha Arimar Sheikh of Yava Malacha Kavod. The Gomer. And over in Tehillim, where he, where he explains, he says, Really, what's going on in the first Pasuk is to say, yes, Hashem gave the world over to everyone. However, not everyone is, uh, you know, is going to be uh, worthy of being in the base of Mitosh, of, of being able to have that connection with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Rather, the kpito, you know, sort of tells us um, more that detail. So, Usha Ari, be me shloma beno, Keshavala Hachnis or on the base, Kosha Kadasha, Vichuli Adkan. And it talks about that, how, you know, it's, you know, Shlomo Malach is the one who could build it and could build and could put the Aron into the Kosha Kadasha. So, that's what the kpito is talking about. Mikomakom, Khan Bigmara Madge Shirashi Sha'ini Stabik Bamir Sapozak Hamyuad Lashem Hart Sumlov Gomer Elat Sarikla Sayan is Koha Mizmar. So don't think, and what Rashi is telling us in the Gemara is don't think you don't you, we should only be saying that first Pasuk, and that's it, and not the entire capital, the entire paragraph or the entire Mizmar. No. Rashi is telling us you we say the whole thing, but really the Ikar is just the first Pasuk. At least that's the connection to, to the day of the week. Um, and he says, "V'chem b'shlishi, how you omrim elokim nitzav ba'adaskel." On the on Tuesday, we say uh, we say the the paragraph starting elokim nitzav ba'adaskel. Al shem et shegila eretz bechachmasa v'heikin teva la'adaso. The Kadosh Baruch Hu was was preparing the world not for everybody, but for adaskel, meaning bnei Yisrael. Ari sharak tevas adaskel kshur le'inyan oso hayom v'chem b'shrayamim. So in every, um, he doesn't go through all of them here, but in all of the uh, Mizmar Shirim for, for each day, there's only a Pasuk or even maybe a couple of words that connects it back to um, to that day in, in the um, uh, in the Bria. And, and that's why we say it. Um, one thing he doesn't say, I'm just, you know, just sort of add in is I think um, when we, you know, if we're still sort of wondering why the entire Mizmar, why not just say, you know, that Pusuk or, or whatever is really no get to the day, um, you know, we're certainly learning this, at, you know, at Derek Pshat and going back to what we learned um, a while back with Pardes, right, there's certainly three other levels of how we can start to understand what is this Kapitok Tehillim that we're saying for its Mizmar, what is it really doing and what's going on inside of it. And so there are other things, certainly there's going to be other connections to it, but at least at a Pshat level, this is the reason why we say this, this Mizmar on this given day. So he continues and says, "Mavur b'ze sheyish betfila mizmari tehillim shekavu chazal la'omram shebe'atzem rak chelak mehem kashul l'seder atfila v'tzarich lahask lahakir ha'eker shekavu nasa bo chazal v'lechavin bo." He says, "This is really what we should be doing: is thinking about what is it about this, you know, in this case, this mizmor that connects it to, so that I can be thinking about it. That's where I should be focused my attention." When I'm davening, is that's at least the bare minimum of where I should focus? Is hey, you know, on Sunday I should be thinking about Teva Vyoshveva, right? Shavare Kashruhu la Marechas Aksharan Bet Mahalech Nesuyim Betfila. There's a reason why this whole thing is coming in and how it's connected into Tfila. That's what we should be thinking about. Vahari Lenu 
Hochocha Brura Shemishi Dabek Rak be Perish Milos, um, Hamizma Lafi Masha Perishuhu, Meforsha Tanach. And, and uh, clearly, if you know, if all you're thinking about is the what the words mean in terms of just, you know, that, that uh, in terms of how it falls out in Tanakh, meaning if you're going to look at the Mizmor in Tehillim and just look at what the words mean, you are completely missing the mark um, from how this fits in with the whole Seder of Tefillah. And, you know, you also, I mean, just a, it's a big mistake. And, and, you know, what you're losing is, you know, certainly counteracts what you gain from just understanding the word. So I, what he's really sort of, uh, I think, accentuating is the idea that understanding the words by itself without context and without understanding why Chazal put um, that piece of davening into that specific place, we're really missing out on on, on the bigger picture and, and really on, on how we can really connect to to, to tefillah uh, in a deeper way. So let's do uh, one more example, and then maybe we'll stop for today. Maybe we'll, we'll pick up from here next week and look at even more examples of you know what of of what he's uh, of what he's showing us. So Dukma Nusafis la emes. Um, it's so another idea. It's not necessarily, I think, from from, Davin, from what we daven itself, but again, just showing us another idea of how these connections uh, work. So we're going back just to give a, a quick recap because he doesn't give that to us. So in Shmuel Aleph, um, in the times of David Melech, the at this point David Melech sort of inherits the situation where the Aron was uh, captive, was held captive by the Plishtim. Um, right, this is going all the way back to when it was taken out from Shiloh uh, when they fought the Plishtim and they lost the battle and it was um, and it was uh, taken captive. So. At some point, there's a whole story to this, but you know the police teams start having trouble because the Aron's there, and they realize the having an Aron Kodesh in our midst is more trouble than than it's worth for us. Let's send it back to Bnei Yisrael. Let them have their Aron back, and the problems will you know will will, will discontinue from us. So um, the pasuk says that that uh, or the police it says that the police team when they send the Aron back, they put it on. A cart that was, you know, that was pulled by these um, by these cows, and it says that the cows went straight, basically went straight down the path um, back to I think it was Beit Shemesh, where where, where it was heading towards Bnei Yisrael. The Amr Sham my Vishirena. So in the Gemara it says, what do you mean my Vishirena? It sounds like they were singing, right? Parshat shot is that they were going straight down the path. Um, that's what it means. Uh, you know, the Lushan of Yashar, not the Lushan of, Sh- of, of Shira, Shar. So, Amr Rabbi Yochan, Mishum, Rabbi Meir, Amr Shira, Umay Shira, Amru. What do you mean they said Shira? What Shira were they said? Were the cow singing? Amr Rabbi Yochan, Mishum, Rabbi Meir, Az Yashar, Moshe, Vnei Yisrael. They said Az Yashar. Right. What does that have? You know, what, what does one have to do with the other? Perish Rashi, Az Yashar, Ki Gaoga, Al Leshloch, Yad, the Plishtim, Bedogon, Ale. Um, so what does it mean? So Rashi says that why Az Yasher? Only is we're only talking about the pasuk um, Ki Ga'oga that Hashem is uplifted, is made, uh, is exalted, right? Why? Because sending these, sending the Aron to the Plishtim, and it destroyed their 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 gods, right? Their gods were knocked over and were destroyed. That was part of the story. That's why they wanted to give the Aram back to us. So Berish Hashem Hika Begaon Beplishtim Lashfilam. So he meaning that Hashem um, hit, you know, with uh, you know the way that he hit the Plishtim exalted him because they realized what does that mean? The Plishtim realized the power of the Aron and the power of what Hashem can do and that you know exalted Hashem. So we can see from Rashi that what's the connection? We say Az Yashir um, to Shir Hayam to this story of the of the Parim uh, of the Paras. 
who rock the Pasa Kiga Oga. It's really only about Kiga Oga. Ulam, however, the Maharsha Sham Hosif, Vyod Yesh the Forest, Bishiras Azyesh, Remez on Maisa Zed, the Maharsha says there could be another Remez to this Maisa, Shneam Marbo, Shimu Amim Yergazun, Chil Achas Yoshve Palashas. Because the Pasuk actually says that that uh, that the nations heard and they were feared and, and, and they were scared, right? Um, and it talks about Yoshe Palashas, those who were the Plishtim, that the Plishtim themselves were scared. So here we have, actually have a puzzle that says, um, that, that seems to indicate, now this is talking about the Plishtim that, you know, by Yamsuf, right? I mean, Pashup shot again in that, in that puzzle is that, um, is that the nations of the world heard about Kriyas Yamsuf, right? The Medr says that all the waters around the world were split. So they knew about it and the Plishtim were scared because they knew that what next step for the Bnei Israel. But at least on Derek Remez from the Marsha, this is also talking about the Plishtim even in, at this stage, um, you know, what was this? Probably a couple hundred years, a few hundred years later. Hari Shalom, Matzah Dover, Hakusha, the Indian, Shiras, Aparas, Rak, Oso, Pazak. But still, we're only talking about one or two psukim that connects this back to this story. Bishar Hashir, Osek, has been a Kamas Hashem, a Paro, Besochiyam. The rest of it is all talking about Paro and the Yam. Rav Tachas Aritz, Liyarde, Hayam. And the promise that Hashem is going to bring us to Eretz Yisrael and build a and build a base of Mekdash. Lo kasher kla leinin shiras aparos. So that has nothing to do with the shiras aparos. So again, it's just another example of how um, Chazal will make a connection, but it's a connection of an entire length of a, a, of the shira, but it's really only one, maybe two psukim that really connect it back. So well, this is a, a good place to stop, but I think what we're starting to see is, is just this idea of how um, in the Sefer, he's going to sort of bring out how we can make connections and, and understand a little bit better, a little bit more Clarkite, what is, like, why are we saying a specific thing in a specific place within davening? And that's what we're trying to pick up um, over the next couple of weeks and try to learn more about these.